Welcome back to Plug and Play with Vcharged. So this one is actually, unlike the rest of them, by popular demand. So we have had a lot of customers asking us about this. We have a lot of customers using this and I know there's a lot of drivers out there on this because it is one of the most popular products for EV drivers. Today, we're gonna look at Intelligent Octopus, getting it working and some tips and tricks for you if you've come to this video a little bit later on and you're already in the process of getting set up. If you're here on this video, we're going to assume it's for one of two reasons. Either you're looking to get signed up to Intelligent Octopus and you already have the vehicle, the charger, and you're really looking at some tips and tricks to see whether you can get it started, or you're already well into this process and just looking for a little bit of help to get it over the line. Now, if you are here for any other reasons, such as looking at what the best tariff for you is, looking at different EV selection or compatibility, we do have another video on that. We'll send the link at the end of this video, but it's essentially covering smart tariffs and the different types. So a couple of prerequisites before you get started. We're assuming you have an electric vehicle. We're assuming you have a charger installed. You will need a smart meter to get on Intelligent Octopus. And one of the interesting tips that we've picked up is that if you are already on Octopus, which you will need to be a customer of theirs before you can sign up to Intelligent, is that you actually need to be on their standard tariff because Intelligent Octopus is actually an add-on to that tariff. If you're on one of the other ones, you can switch over to the standard and then you can add it on. So that's a good one to get you started. Assuming you've got all of those things, we can get into it. So as an Octopus customer, you probably already have the Octopus app. If you don't, just head over to your app store, download it, open it up and log in using your customer details. Now, assuming you've already signed up to Intelligent Octopus, what you're going to see at the top of the screen is your account balance. You can see a little menu about view your bill, view tariff, etc. A little bit of promo, and we're going to scroll down to explore your lab. In explore your lab, you're going to see Intelligent Octopus Go for EVs and a little button there that says get started. So we'll go ahead and tap that. It's then going to ask you to select the device you want to integrate with. Now, the most important thing here is covered in our other video, but it's that the charger or the vehicle can integrate with Octopus. It's an API connection that basically sends your schedule every day to either the vehicle or the charger and gets you set up. Today, we're really gonna focus on the electric vehicle integration and getting that working. Now, they've got 280 plus makes and models of electric vehicle compatible. So we go ahead and tap on electric vehicles and get started. You're gonna see that you can select one of the makes of the vehicle that you actually have. Here we're gonna go down to Tesla because that's what we've got for today. It's gonna to give you a little instruction screen. Now, not all of us follow the instructions and I know I tend to jump ahead, but it is important that you take note of the very first one. Plug your car in at home. You're gonna need power to your vehicle being offered by the charger for it to actually do its test charge, which comes in later. So let's go through it. Plug your car in at home. Two, make sure your charge limit is above your current charge. This is important. If you've got your car's limit set to 80%, which is quite common for battery protection, you'll find that if you're already at 80%, there's no way that Octopus can test if your charge is working. Thirdly, deactivate any other smart charging apps. Now we're gonna use the V-Charge app to show you that, so just turn smart charging off. But if you have a smart charger, just make sure that it doesn't have a schedule set. Equally, make sure that your car doesn't have a schedule set in it, and you can jump into the menu here. Ensure your car has location settings turned on. For a lot of vehicles, this is a standard, but it might be worth just double checking in your vehicle app or your dashboard to see if you can turn them on and off. And five, ensure your car has the latest updated version of firmware. This is important because Octopus track different firmware versions and their API connections are actually written to make sure they control the car effectively. Assuming all of that's well away, let's get started. So first step, you're gonna to wanna to add your car. Once you've jumped into that, we'll go for Model 3 Long Range Dual Motor. Do try and get this right, as there may be different firmware versions for every different one. If you can go and check it, or go and look at your vehicle dashboard to check which version you have, or any documentation you have if you don't know offhand, it's worth doing. In this instance, it's 2019 to 2020. We're also gonna set up the charger. Now, because we're not actually setting up the charger, this is more of a selection exercise. Other than three models that we mentioned earlier, there aren't any vehicle chargers at the moment with integrations. So I'm just gonna search for V-Charged. And there we go, we we'll pick that and then go for seven untethered, 7.4 kilowatt. Because the charge is not controlling the schedule, it doesn't matter which one I pick there. It's just Octopus taking notice that it's one that they've tested and is part of their approved models list. So then let's connect the device. Now at this point, you're gonna need your login details for whatever you've used to set up your vehicle app or if you have a vehicle portal, it'll be that. So we're gonna go, go to login. Right, it's gonna take me to my Tesla authorization page. Here, I'm gonna enter my email. Then it's gonna ask me for my password. I'm gonna go ahead and sign in. 
Once we've signed in, it's going to take us back to the Octopus page. You'll see a little windmill going around. And then it's going to ask you to add a virtual key. It should say device connected. Now, if there's any issues at this stage, this is an absolutely vital step for getting your vehicle integration set up. What you're essentially doing here is authorizing Octopus to send information to your car around your charging schedule and that requires elements of not just connection but control as well so if you don't get your device connected properly keep going at this uh, until you actually get it set up so go to add virtual key now this seems to be a newer element to the app you need to add the virtual key and it's going to take you back through the authorization in this case through the tesla app i'm going to go for virtual key added or not required because we've already set that one up Next step, we're going to go to test connection. Now, the most important part of this is just to remember where we were with step one of the getting started guide right at the beginning, and that is plug your car in. So we're going to go and do that, and then we're going to move on to testing the connection. So tap test connection, and you see, again, it reiterates the advice that I've just given you, basically getting it plugged in, making sure that everything's set up. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to wait for that to start charging. I'm actually going to go and just double check on the Tesla app that I've started charging. If it doesn't, then it's worth doing it. Charge has already kicked in, so we can go back. Then I'm going to go to test connection. So once I've done test connection, if you get to this stage and it says we could not test your charge, make sure you can try tapping it again, but you'll find that the same result comes up. If we go back from here, we're just going to unlock, stop the charge and start again. So we're going to stop charging here, unlock the charge port, Unplug, I'm going to wait for that all to close down. We'll jump back in here. Plug back in. It's always worth restarting and get everything going again uh, from the start. Again, once it's started, just going to wait for that to kick in. So at the moment, we're at zero kilowatts. I'm just waiting for that to start picking up so I can see that it's actually being offered power. So even though that's flashing green, there's currently no power. Interesting point, since June 2022, there's been a regulation in place around EV charging for the charge point manufacturers that a randomized delay needs to be applied at the start of every charging session. That can be between zero seconds and 10 minutes. Now, if your car's not being offered power, that test charge isn't gonna work because it's gonna think it's not plugged in, but it may not tell you that's why. So that's offering power now. I'm gonna go back in, just make sure that everything's ready to go. All added, and we're gonna go test connection. So you're going to get this little screen with an octopus having a great time going around. This can take up to 10 minutes. So let's go inside and grab a coffee. All right, so we're still getting connected, but that doesn't matter because I've got a coffee. At this point, we're probably going to talk through some tips and tricks around why things may not be working or potentially how you can get them started. So first one we'll go back to is when we plugged in, it actually said we could not test your connection. Interesting point is if, if you go back, end the charging session, plug in, wait a couple of minutes before you actually try and start to test that connection and maybe even go back a screen so that you start the whole process again. That will normally get it started. You're trying to get rid of any cached information that's in either the app, the vehicle or potentially the charger. Interesting point around that is if you leave it plugged in and just start and stop the session via your Tesla app, that actually, or your vehicle app, doesn't have to be Tesla, apologies there, disclaimer. It doesn't really stop the session at all. The charger is still offering power, but the car is saying no. It's not the same as ending a session, unplugging and plugging back in. Slightly different communication standards, not important. What I'm trying to say is, just like with most good laptops, if you turn it off and turn it back on again, you're gonna have a much better chance of getting it working. If you did want to check whether or not your charger is actually using power at different times and that you're matching your schedule, it's actually quite easy to go into your smart charging app for whichever charger you have. You should be able to see a charging curve that shows you at which time the charge is kicking in, when it's stopping and when it's being paused. Making sure that you keep that smart functionality and don't just let your charger go to the wayside and turn it off disconnections from Wi-Fi or your app is going to mean that you can actually track whether or not it's working. It's also really useful if, let's say, for some reason or other, you can't get the Intelligent Octopus app to work, but you've got a schedule for the day. It can always be a bit of a fallback one time or another to go and set the schedule in the charger, and then at least you know you're matching those times. And with that, we're all set up. So at this point, you might be getting all excited and prepared to go and start your first charge. But what you will notice is there's loads of information here before you tap go to dashboard that actually helps you learn how to use the charging schedule correctly. Please do take the time to read through this. It is important and you're already here looking for videos with tips and tricks about Octopus Intelligent. There's a whole list of them there as well. Once you've read through all of that or if you've completely ignored me, don't worry about it. We all do it. Tap go to dashboard and that's going to take you to the next step. 
Now, one other little thing is that obviously this is a smart schedule that tracks when electricity is cheapest. That is commonly overnight and normally later than most people are going to be awake, which means that if it doesn't work for you once, once you've got set up, you may have that nervousness that you're not going to have a charge in the morning if it's happened to you before. So what I would recommend there, obviously, is making sure you go back through everything. If you wanted to, obviously call Octopus. You can speak to your charge point manufacturer. They actually have quite a lot of information that you potentially don't see. They can tell you if they feel it's set up correctly. And again, making sure that schedules are removed from the car, making sure you've got those steps set up. And if you need to, go back and reconnect and redo your test charge just to refresh everything. The last thing you want to do is wake up on the second night without any charge and things can go wrong. At the end of the day, this is a beta product and ultimately making sure that you're integrated and you're comfortable is a massive part of home charging. Another thing is there's a lot of information if you go to the Intelligent Octopus uh, landing page on their website. But one of the things that stands out is that if you feel like your charge isn't stopping straight away, that it can actually be symptomatic. It's not a massive problem unless it never stops. It does say on the website, it can take zero to 10 minutes and customers have fed back, they can take up to 15 minutes before the, start, the charge actually stops. So don't worry, but do keep an eye on it for that first 15 minutes and make sure that it does stop the charge. If not, then it's probably worth starting the session again and making sure it picks up the schedule. Now that we've completed our test charge, you'll be taken to this screen. What you'll notice is it's gonna stay like this if you're still in your test charge session. And the reason for that is part of what they do in the test charge is both start a charge and stop a charging session. So I'm actually gonna need the charger to be plugged back in. Now you could start that through your app, but I would recommend going out, unplugging, plugging back in to start a new session, then when we go to this page, after a short while, we'll be sent our times and then Octopus are gonna start the schedule for us. So let's jump out and do that. So we're back outside and it's not just continuity. My coffee is still hot. So this didn't actually take that long. If it takes longer than 10 minutes, it should just flag that something's wrong and they couldn't complete the test charge. If it doesn't, obviously I'd recommend coming outside, maybe starting the process again, but we're gonna go ahead and unlock and unplug, as I said. So just unlock the charge port grab that out and we're going to go straight back in and we're going to make sure that locks up that's going wait again for a minute just to see that we get our schedule we've actually got this set charge limit is currently 80 percent so i'm going to whack that up to 100 percent because the car's over 80 percent and then ready by my time here eight o'clock absolutely fine hopefully won't wake up before then anyway uh right so waiting on there you'll see it says a charge plan will be made after you've plugged in and then you also get the option to bump charge. Let's say you wanted to head off that day, um, but you didn't want to wait for the schedule once you've got your times. So now that's all set up, car's set to charge. Tesla's telling me that it is charging. Just gonna go ahead and wait for our schedule times to come through so we can go back inside. Actually, before we go in, one more thing. You'll notice that's still charging. Don't worry about it. The whole point is it can take up to 10 minutes for the charge to stop. So I'm still gonna head inside, but I'm confident leaving that, that it will get stopped by Octopus. All right, so they've mapped tonight's smart charge, but this is a really interesting point and actually one of the massive benefits of vehicle integration. You see here at the top, it says that we've mapped your charge, but your vehicle limit's too low. And that's because we've actually got set in the Tesla a 90% limit. So what I can do is go in there, and I can whip that up to 100%, and then pop back in. And then it, after a little while, it will refresh. It actually says we last checked at 1.20 p.m. So that will refresh. Um, and then I've got the smart charging schedule for tonight. Now, at this point, obviously I've been given my times. Octopus are telling me I've got them, but I am still gonna jump back into the app and just check that I'm not charging. And I actually am still charging. So I'm gonna wait a little bit longer and we'll see how that goes. All right, that notification's gone. Charge limit's all set and I've got my times. Tesla stopped charging, so we're all good to go. Now, if you want a bit of a tip on how to make the most out of this, dynamic schedules are just that, they're dynamic, which means that it won't always be that your cheapest electricity is between your set times. It could be that you get a little bit of cheap electricity when you get home, it could be at any time in the day up to that point. My recommendation, if you're at home and you're not immediately popping out, plug the car in, start your charging schedule, see what you get you could find that you're pleasantly surprised and you get some cheap electricity in the day and a little bit longer to charge. Now, if you did want to go into a little bit more detail about static versus dynamic tariffs, look at what's available on the market, you can actually check out the link to the video here. Alternatively, if you want to ask any questions, drop down into the comments and our team will get back to you. It's been great having you. This is Plug and Play Episode 6. On to the next one. <laughs>